Well, while I might be surrounded by a lot of blue right now, I'm certainly not feeling that way. I'm very excited because I just finished painting a dresser in Dixie Belle's beautiful Bunker Hill blue, and I'm very proud of the way it turned out, so I would love it if you would join me and watch the process. <music> Welcome back to Table Flipping Housewife. I'm Amy Whalen. Now you might recall in a previous video that Kevin and I went to an estate sale where we purchased a bunch of furniture because the prices were unbelievably low. There I purchased a $10 dresser. There was nothing fancy or remarkable about it. Frankly, it was quite ugly. It was made of laminate, the top and the sides. You drum your fingernails on it. If it sounded and felt like plastic. There were problems with the drawers. You would start to open them and they would just tip and fall out. And the hardware was dark and chunky and I didn't know if I liked it, but I couldn't pass it up because of the price. So let's get started. drawers have been fixed. They now don't topple over when I open them. Okay, but this one I still have to fix and I want to show you what I did. See how you pull it out and it kind of topples like that? It's because unlike this drawer now, it lacks this bracket and I'm going to show you how to put that on the last drawer. I got these adjustable drawer guide kits. They're by Everbuilt. I picked them up at our Home Depot. I'm getting ready to start sanding the dresser. Now the top is laminate, so I know that I need to scuff sand it well so that when I prime and paint, it'll stick to this laminate surface. The surf prep pads are a little bit different. They're what they call coarse is what we consider 80 grit to 100 grit. So I'm going to start with a coarse pad, a coarse sheet to start scuff sanding. Now, when it gets to these details that I don't want to sand away, I'm going to start using the interface pad with, um, at first, a coarse foam pad on it, and then I'll switch to a medium. scuff sanding is you can see areas more clearly that are going to need some filler. Now this is something I can tell there's texture to it that'll show up once it's painted. So there, that chip there. if you can tell but behind me it is starting to snow and this southern girl is very excited it's not sticking to the ground yet but this is supposed to go on for hours so fingers crossed but nonetheless it's a perfect day to be down in the basement painting now I've already put one coat of Zinsser Ben shellac based primer on the dresser and all the drawers now I'm going to be painting it with Dixie Belle's Bunker Hill blue chalk paint and Dixie Belle indicates and other chalk paint manufacturers will say that you don't need to pre-sand or pre-prime, but I do so for insurance since I'm going to be reselling the piece. Now, ideally, I would have used a dark tinted primer since I'm putting a dark color on the dresser, but I didn't have any tinted primer and with the winter weather advisory, I thought it would be best to stay put. So that is done. I'm going to be lightly sanding it with a 220 grit sandpaper, wiping it down, and then I'm gonna get busy painting. I'll be using the Dixie Bell Mini Angle Brush, and I'm excited to get started. As you can see, the paint is very, very thick. 
And so I like to put a little bit into a separate container and um, dilute it just a smidge with water. So let's do that. So I'm just gonna put a couple squirts in. Let's see if that helps. Oof, this is thick. Still gonna add some more. And the reason I'm putting a little bit of water in there is that I want the paint to be thin enough that it takes just a smidge longer to dry so that the paint has time to self-level and um, that eliminates the brush strokes. Now I like to use these paint stirrers to mix up my paint and then when they dry I put the name of the paint here and it's my sample stick to keep for future consideration of the color. All right, the other thing I want to do is mist my brush. Okay, and here we go. Now, with chalk paint, you could do one of two things. You can you can apply the paint in a cross pattern like that if you want a little bit of texture. I do not. I would rather a smooth finish. So I am going to be just painting in one direction. I know I will be doing two, if not three coats of paint on this. So what you want to do is go ahead, apply the paint, and then leave it alone. One of the beauties of Dixie Belle paint is that it is safe to use it indoors, which makes it an excellent choice when it's too cold or too hot to paint outdoors. Now, something else that you can do is to mist the furniture itself. In addition to your brush, it helps the paint glide on. And again, it helps it take a little bit longer to dry so that you can, the paint can self level. Okay. For the side, I'm going to do this just to slather the paint on. And then I'm going to go straight across. <laughs> and that's it for that side. So what I'm going to do is probably switch to my square zebra brush to do the details on the front. looks like after the first coat. It's very streaky. You still see some of the, the white primer popping through, but that is to be totally expected. So if you're using chalk-based paint, and really any paint for that matter, if you're getting streakiness after the first coat, then just be patient because by the time you put on the second coat, and possibly the third coat, you'll see that it's beautiful coverage. Look at the difference just two coats make. Coverage looks really good. What I am noticing, however, is you can still see my brush strokes here. So what I think I'm going to do, I have this much paint left. It's about a quarter of the container. I'm going to thin it down, maybe a tablespoon of water and give almost everything another quick coat. Well, that was nerve wracking because 
I've pretty much used up all the paint. So I'm hoping that once this third touch up coat dries, there are no more spots that need to be touched up. I have just a smidge of enough paint in here that when I go to seal it, if I use the polycrylic, I'll just pour the polycrylic in here and mix it up and then that way it's tinted to avoid those streaks when I spray it on. light it was so much easier to see some imperfections now you can see in these two photographs it's very streaky I think this is beyond the fact that when you top coat dark colors you get streakiness I think it's beyond that I tinted it after all right I think I over diluted it I had reached out to a forum and said okay guys what did I do wrong? And a very seasoned painter told me that when she is painting with a dark chalk paint, she has experienced that if she over dilutes with water, that she gets streaks. And I really over diluted that third coat because I hardly had any paint left. So I'm learning and this is, this is okay. So I went out and I bought more paint. And what I'm going to do this time is put equal parts paint and top coat into the sprayer and I'm going to spray it. I'm hoping that way there'll be no more streaks and that maybe this would be enough as a top coat since there's so many layers of top coat underneath, I don't know. So I am gonna spray it and then if I think if it needs some added protection, then I'll wax it indoors because I won't get any streaks with that. So fingers crossed that this works. Now today is quite literally freezing. I'm going to be spraying in my garage with the doors closed. So you can be assured I'm gonna be wearing my respirator. Mm -hmm. 